Hey, this is Kez Bracey for Tuts Plus. Welcome to the first lesson of Up and Running with Foundation for Apps. Now, to get you kicked off, we're going to start at the very beginning by making sure that you've got a pretty solid understanding of what Foundation for Apps actually is. Now, at a very high level, Foundation for Apps is a UI system for web applications. Now, we're going to go into that a little bit deeper so you understand exactly what is behind Foundation for Apps and what makes it unique. And the best place to start with that is to ask the question, what is the difference between Foundation for Apps and the regular foundation framework for websites that most web developers are familiar with to varying degrees? Now, the main difference between Foundation for Apps and regular foundation is its integration with the AngularJS system. And it's this integration that takes foundation from being something that's focused primarily on producing HTML and CSS into something that's got more interactivity built into it from the word go. So in a nutshell, it's this relationship between foundation and AngularJS that puts the apps into foundation for apps. Naturally, the next question then is, what is AngularJS? AngularJS is a JavaScript framework created by Google, and what it does is it basically allows you to take what would otherwise be a static HTML site and turn it into something dynamic. Angular gives you ways to update the content in any given HTML page. It gives you ways to use HTML as a templating language so that you can fill in an HTML document with content that's been pulled in from a database or from local storage. And it also allows you to modify the DOM. We might otherwise use something like jQuery for things like showing or hiding content or modifying various things like colors and the way CSS is affecting things, class names. All of these types of of different functionality can be handled all under the one umbrella of working with AngularJS. And to help all of that make more practical sense, let's have a quick look at a couple of examples of a few different web apps that have been built using AngularJS. First up, we have Vivo, which is a video site. And with this site, AngularJS is used to populate pages. So whenever you hit a navigation link or you load up a video, it's actually using AngularJS to replace the original content that was loaded the first time you hit the the main domain of the of the Vivo site. Next, we have Trip in View, where AngularJS powers this site's ability to have you search for a particular seaside destination, and it will then go through its database of photographs and present you with both maps and some photographs of the area that you've searched for. And this is all handled on the client side, so it's nice and snappy, nice and quick, using AngularJS. And the last example we're going to have a quick look at is this to-do application powered by AngularJS. Now, with this little application, you can type in the name of a task that you need to complete, and it will create a list item for that task for you. And then later on, you have the ability to check that item off as being complete or to delete it altogether. This is just a few examples of the kind of apps that you can make with AngularJS. There are thousands and thousands of different examples out there, and you can go around and have a look and see for yourself what other kinds of things you can do with AngularJS. Now, how does this relate back to Foundation for Apps? Well, Foundation for Apps aims to make it easier for you to produce AngularJS-powered apps in the same way that regular Foundation makes it easier for you to produce regular websites. And it does this by streamlining the process of creating the UI for an app as much as possible. You may or may not have heard of the term MVC or Model View Controller, which is a way of organizing all the information that has to work together to make your application operate. And this structure is integral to the way that Foundation for Apps and AngularJS integrate and the roles that they play inside an app. For the purposes of what you'll be learning in this course, the most important elements of this MVC structure are the M and the V. So the M 
stands for model. And model is, is just a collection of information or of data or content that your application or your site will be processing. So that will typically refer to content that's been organized in a database or content that's been organized inside local storage. This information can be stored anywhere you like. It just refers to the raw data that's behind your application. And then you have the V, which stands for view. And this is really just another way of saying a UI. So the view is the part that the end user will view. This is your HTML, your CSS. This is the part of your application where everything's been fully processed, fully rendered, and you have an end result that the user will interact with. Now, in this structure, AngularJS acts as an intermediary. So it will communicate with your model and it will retrieve all of your data that you need to process. And it will also communicate with your view. So it will process that raw data into a form that the view can then take and show to a user. And this is where Foundation for Apps steps in. Foundation for Apps is designed pre-integrated with AngularJS. So it's already set up so that you can efficiently produce views that are specifically designed to work with an AngularJS powered app. And there are two main aspects to the UI creation process that Foundation for Apps affords you. One is the pre-integration with Angular that I mentioned, and the other is a series of sophisticated pre-built components that you can piece together to create an app UI, and that you can also modify to suit your own needs. So you can round out your idea of what's included in Foundation. We'll have a little look at a couple of examples of these different types of aspects. However, especially with the Angular side of things, there's a lot of depth there. So we won't go too deeply into every single feature that's included in Foundation for Apps. We'll just have enough of a look so that you have a grasp on what you'll be working with in this system. As I mentioned, Foundation has a lot happening with its AngularJS integration, but from a UI design point of view, probably what's most relevant to you is what it prevents you from having to do, what it shortcuts you through. And one of its strengths in, in that area in particular is how you would normally have to handle navigation from one page to the next if you were writing up an Angular app from scratch. Normally, you would have to write up some JavaScript that would take care of something called routing. So this would handle your route as you're going through a site from looking at one view or one template to the next template or the next view. And normally, you would have to write up a bunch of JavaScript like this. But with Foundation for Apps, you don't have to do any of that because it has an automated system that will generate all of this code in the background for you. Instead, with Foundation for Apps, all you have to do is add a little bit of front matter at the top of each of your templates, and that looks like this. And then when you are building your app, Foundation will look at this front matter at the top of your template, and it will produce all that necessary JavaScript that Angular needs to function without you having to touch a line of JavaScript code. And there are actually a lot of other Angular-based features inside Foundation for Apps, but the beauty of this system is when you're focusing on UI design, you won't have to think about any of those things. They're all just taken care of for you. So as long as you have a developer who is handling the AngularJS side of things, for you as a web designer, you'll be able to work with Foundation for Apps to create the UI to go over the top of that Angular powered application. Now, you won't need to have an intensive understanding of Angular itself. All you'll need to know is how to work with the information that Angular provides you by using a few different pieces of syntax in your HTML. And that's what you're going to be learning in this course. Some of that syntax may come to you a little bit more easily if you do have just some. Uh, beginner to intermediate level experience with a language like JavaScript or with something similar. But if you don't have any experience with something like that, I will be stepping you through exactly how each of these pieces of syntax works. Now moving on to the UI building tools that Foundation perhaps provides you with, one of its most prominent elements is its grid system. 
This is a modern grid system. It's built on Flexbox, so it has a lot of really cool features. We'll be going through these features more closely in a later lesson, but at a glance, the grid allows you to do things like having automatically sized blocks without you needing to specify exactly what width a block needs to be within your grid. So for example, you can set things up so that if you have three columns in a row, those will automatically size themselves to be one third of the available space each. You have the manual grid sizing that you might be familiar with if you have used the regular foundation framework. You've got the ability to stack all of your blocks on top of each other just by adding a class name. And you can also control the alignment of blocks inside each of your rows. We'll go through all of that in more detail in a later lesson. Another of Foundation for App's most prominent elements is its Motion UI system. Now, this is a collection of pre-written animations that you can deploy into your site without having to write any of the code for them yourself. Now, you can animate transitions, so as content either appears or disappears on your site, and you can also run animations on specific objects. And they've made this really quick and easy to deploy because every animation has a name. So when you want to use that animation, all you need to do is put its name, in as one of the CSS classes on the element that you want to animate, or put its name in the front matter that we mentioned earlier that appears at the top of each one of your templates. For example, we can make this little kitten fade in by just using the animation named fade in, just like that. Or we could animate this square here by having the class wiggle or shake added to it on click. So just a couple of things to be aware of with Foundation for Apps. Now, this is a modern framework. It's designed using all of the best technologies that are available to us today. And that unfortunately means that some older browsers aren't going to be able to run a Foundation for Apps site. You can see in the compatibility chart here that IE 6 to 9 not supported and nor is Android 2. So just make sure that you include a fallback message of some type to let anyone who is using one of these browsers know that they'll just need to switch over to a different browser in order to be able to view your application. Also, the CSS in Foundation for Apps is produced by way of the SAS preprocessor. Now, if you wanted to, you could just use the CSS that ships with Foundation for Apps and you'll be perfectly able to create a full UI. However, if you want to start getting into customizing the CSS at all, then you're really going to want to start digging into the SAS. And that's something that we'll be going through in this course. And lastly, working with Foundation for Apps will involve a little bit of working with the command line. Foundation for Apps provides a CLI, a command line interface, and that handles the actual building of your application. You'll work on some raw files and it will turn those raw files into an application for you. But don't let that put you off even if you've never worked with command line before. I also have a tutorial series that's available for free in the written tutorial section of Tuts Plus, and I'll put a link for that down below. And if you have never touched command line before in your life, this will be enough to take you well into the point of being comfortable with what you'll need for this course. And now to wrap up our introduction of what Foundation for Apps is, let's just have a quick look through some of the pre-built components that you'll be able to assemble to make up your overall UI. Support for touch gestures is included. For example, a user on a touch interface would be able to swipe to close off this panel. We have things like these action sheets, which are great for embedding little action-oriented submenus throughout your interface. We have menu bars, title bars. We have modal dialog boxes. We have plug and play buttons of various colors. We have got form styling already done and good to go. We have got these little card units, which we'll be using quite heavily in our task management app. We've got accordion menus. We've got labels and badges, icon integration, and a whole lot more. That wraps up our summary of what Foundation for Apps is. In the next lesson, you're going to start getting hands-on with Foundation for Apps. You'll be installing 
foundation for apps itself. And you'll be learning how to use the system of development tools that it comes with. And that includes automatic compilation of your SAS files and a local host preview of the application that you're building. And as an optional extra, you're also going to learn how to integrate browser sync so that you have live reload every time you make a change to your application and so that you also have the ability to do testing on multiple devices. So you'll be able to test on tablets and phones at the same time as you're working on your application on your desktop computer. I'll see you in the next lesson.